What's up you guys? It's Dev back with another video and in today's video I'm gonna take you guys on a little bit of a journey what's been happening in my life over the last two weeks So obviously yeah, like you lot said you guys like my videos and you like my British accent Yeah, so like we're gonna take it back from the beginning and we're gonna go through literally what well, literally literally That's how you get a British accent. You just say literally a bunch of times, but for real I live in Brooklyn, as you guys know. I work in Manhattan. My commute is about 45 minutes to an hour every single day. And I've been doing it for more than a year, and I don't mind it too much. You know, it hasn't killed me yet, but, you know, it's starting to affect me a little bit. So I was like, you know what? Let me just check to see what kind of apartments can I get in Manhattan for around the same that I pay here, right? So I pay $2,000 here. It's like $2,300 with my car parking spot so i'm looking at spots in the city and see what i could get for about 2500 up to 3000 because if i could walk to work every day save time save stress that extra bit of money could go a long way and it might be worth it actually right so if you guys are interested uh stick around and then we'll see what new york city has to offer in manhattan this conclusion of moving closer to work I was like, hey, does it actually make me more happy or is it just in my head? But, you know, there's lots of research studies and information that I pulled up online that proves that this is true. Right. So this is before I made this decision. I was like, will it actually affect my life? So there's actually studies that show commuting over 30 minutes by car or public transit correlates with higher anxiety and lower job satisfaction. Uh, so this was a study done in 2006, and that probably relates to why everyone loved being remote, because you could start your job right when it started, finish it right when it finishes, and you don't have to worry about all the wasted time of public transportation. Okay, another study from the University of Cambridge shows that shortening the commute can lead to significant improvement in overall well-being. So it's equal to making 17% more in income, which is a lot of money. That's like 20% extra income just by living closer to work and having a shorter commute. So something you got to, you know, consider the trade-offs, right? So this is all things that I was thinking about when I was deciding if I should actually move closer to work. So what I did was I toured a few apartments in the area close-ish to work. It would be under like a 15-minute commute to get to work, walking or either like maybe one subway stop. So let's get straight into it and, and look at the apartments. Okay, so this place is $26.50 a month. The entrance, really old school, garbage in the front, red flag, red flag. Uh, the place is cool. This is a one bedroom, a lot of light. The bad thing about this was that it was like directly facing a busy street. And uh, the second bedroom is so small. I think that can't even fit a queen bed. That's probably like maybe like a double max, but that's the whole room. This place was pretty nice, though, like very bright and technically a one bedroom. Kind of an awkward layout, but hey, it's New York, so not too bad, right? Good price, too. Second apartment, $3,000 in the same area in Midtown. This building was beautiful. Traditional doorman, like a lot of old people living here, old money, you know what I mean? Uh, just an elevators, like the last place had no elevators. This place was like pretty classy. I liked it. It was in Midtown, a nice vibe. You know, small square studio, but separated kitchen, which is important because, you know, it, you can like not have the smells infiltrating everything. Next place, $2,750. Okay, this place, old building, not much natural light. It was actually pretty dark. It just faced other buildings, and it was actually kind of small, too. So the layout's really weird. The kitchen is cute. That's all I'm going to say. It's like it's a, literally a little tucked away square, so it does what it needs to do. But this place, it's nice inside, but, you know, yeah, nothing special. This place, oh, my God, this next place. I love this place. It was so big. It's a studio, but it was so big. It gets so much natural light. The view was incredible. A little bit over what I wanted to spend. It was $3,100, but I could see myself living here. The only thing I didn't like about this place was that it was kind of loud. The windows weren't double glazed, so you could hear a lot of the noise coming in from the street, and that was really annoying. I think I would hate like trying to go to sleep and having it be loud all the time. Also, the building was a little bit like... It was, there was a doorman, but it was a little bit rough around the edges. It didn't have like nice finishes and nice maintenance and stuff but this view oh my god the view was perfect 2600 this is the place that i literally wanted to book like i'm going to talk about it in a bit but i wanted this place because it was south facing it was close to my job it was quiet and um it was a nice space you know it's it probably about the same size as my apartment now maybe a little bit smaller outdated kitchen outdated bathroom but great price 
I was like, I really want to live in this place. But a week ago when I checked it out, I felt like I had to apply that night because the landlord was telling me that basically people wanted it and someone already applied and all these things. But to get this specific place to apply, you also had to put down a deposit of five hundred dollars. And if you don't take the apartment, they keep the five hundred dollars. And if you get rejected from the apartment, you get the five hundred dollars back. So you can't just apply to see like, if you're going to apply. You better pretty much got to move there because the five hundred dollars, they're going to keep it right. So I was really stressed. I was like, should I move? Should I stay? This place was really close, you know, to where I work. So stressed. I texted pretty much about like a lot of my friends and I asked them what to do. Yeah. It was stressful, but come to find out, I realized I talked to my landlord at my current place. I've lived here for already more than a year, and um, I thought I was going month to month, right? So I thought I could just end at the end of the month, but talked to my landlord, and he told me that actually it was like an auto renew thing, and I guess I wasn't aware of it, which I'm not totally mad at, but if I wanted to break the lease now, I would have to pay two months in rent to break the lease here. To move in, I would have to pay the two months of the break fee here. I would have to pay the broker's fee at the new place and then the first month and the last month. And then, yeah, so that's six months of rent pretty much just to like change apartments. So that's not really the wisest decision. And I realized, you know, that helped me decide that I'm going to stay. And my lease finishes here in June. So at least I can just ride this out, appreciate what I have and be grateful for my current situation. Because although my commute to work is a little bit annoying, Many people have it much worse, and it's just something I can aspire to do better next time, right? So when I look for my next place, I can figure out if I want to move or where I want to move, and I could take it sort of day by day in that respect, right? And who knows, with the way the tech landscape is working out, I might even get laid off before next June, right? So you never know. You got to live in the moment and just be grateful and just accept what is, which is I can't really break my lease for a cheap price, and I can't move into that place. So looking back at my experience, I would say, what are the pros and cons of living closer to work, of living in Manhattan versus living in Brooklyn? And I'm going to summarize it for you guys right now because I kind of rambled in the last clip. OK, so basically in Manhattan, you're going to get less for your money. The apartments are going to be smaller. They're going to cost more. Uh, they're going to be older buildings. It's a high chance, too, that they're going to have doormen, especially in the Midtown area. A lot of the buildings, even if they're old, they have doormen. Something to consider is pests. The older the building, the worse the garbage filtration system and the likelihood that there's pests, right? But obviously the benefit is you're in Manhattan. It's amazing. You can walk everywhere. You can walk to work. You can, the transfers to get everywhere is so easy. You can go to Queens, you can go to Brooklyn, all easy, right? So it's very simple. Those are the benefits of that. And that's the great thing about it. I would say now for Brooklyn, of course, it's cheaper. You get more for your money. Uh, the cons is that. The distance is longer, too. But something that you also need to consider is kind of like what vibe you want to be in. Right. Like another thing is that even though Midtown Manhattan would be closer for me for work, I would miss Brooklyn a lot because I kind of like the vibe out here. I like the people here. A lot of people are my age. A lot of people are in a similar situation. I have friends that live in the neighborhood. There's like bars, coffee shops that I like going to and all these things near my work. There's not that vibe at all. It's very corporate it's very everyone it's people who don't live in the city they're coming into the city for work or they're tourists or it's just a mix of people there's no home feeling right so that's also a trade-off of course walking to work is really cool and really important but i guess at the end of the day it comes down to how you want to spend your life and what you want to do on your off time right like how do you want to spend after work and the weekend do you want to be in the city in those kind of neighborhoods and commute to areas that you find more interesting so it's a very fascinating situation to be in. Uh, I think probably the best bet is to move somewhere in between where you don't compromise too much on the culture and the vibe, but also you don't live way too far that it takes forever to get to work. Uh, and that's where I'm at with that. Right. So I'm thinking maybe Queens, maybe Queens, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching the video. Make sure that if you guys like the video, you leave a comment down below. You uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe, all that stuff, you know, because I appreciate the support. I read the comments. You guys are fire. Like everyone's like giving me good advice and life advice and stuff like that. And like giving me tips and asking good questions. I'm like, yo, I love this community that we're building y'all. So like it's perfect. Um, and also if you want to see other topics too, or anything else, 
you want me to explore about like life in New York, yeah, let me know in the comments down below and then I can make a video on it. With all that said, uh, that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.